Go on, John chapter 3 this morning. We'll solve it and quote it. John 3, 16. And yet, we have all come to the reality of it. The reality of it in our lives. The confidence of it in our lives. John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world. Put your name in there. God loved Sam. God loved Lisa. For God loved Sarah. For God loved David. For God loved him. God love. You see, we confuse the issue sometimes because our conception of what love is is not the kind of love that God has for us. In fact, it says, I don't have the scripture written down, but it says that God is love. God is not, love is not an emotional thing. I mean, love can be emotion, but it's not with God. It's something more. It's something more secure. It's something more, uh, emotions can be fickle. I mean, you know, you feel this, you don't feel that, blah, blah, blah. What he's saying here is, 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 is God loved the world. God loved you. And that's not an emotional thing. I mean, it can be you can feel God's love, you can feel His presence. But just because you don't feel it doesn't mean He loves you, doesn't love you. Just because circumstances have come up in your life doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. You have to have the assurance that God loves you. It says, for God so loved you that He gave His Son. God, you see, that's not an emotional thing. God loved you that He gave His Son. What more can He give you? He gave you His Son. He gave His Son for you. That's the love of God. Another scripture says if He didn't withhold His Son, would He withhold anything else? If He gave His Son, what else could He possibly withhold? Would he possibly? He, he, he gave the most dearest thing, dearest one, to him, and that was his son. For God so loved you that he gave his son, that if you would believe in him, you would not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, are you secure in the fact that God loves you? Or does when something, a circumstance of life pop up, and all of a sudden you think, well, wait a minute, God doesn't love me. Because this or that happened, or somebody said this, or... No, that has nothing based on what other people do, or what this life holds, the circumstances of this life. God's love is secure. God's love for you is unchanging. It doesn't change. God's love for you does not change. No matter what you do, what you think, what you say, what circumstance of life there is, God's love does not change for you. All the erroneous teaching about God sending sickness and disease to teach you a lesson or this or that or the other thing, it is baloney. It's religious baloney. God's love, God love, why God's love in the sense that He provided for you. See, you couldn't fellowship with God before Christ came. You could have a relationship with God under the old covenant. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying before you were born again, you had no desire to love God, to do anything. It says, we love Him. Why? Because He first loved us. You had no capability of loving God. Did you? Before you were saved? Did you love God, Sam, before you were saved? No. You loved yourself. <laughs> to be honest. You loved yourself. Everybody loves yourself. We don't love Him because... I mean, He doesn't love us because we first love Him. He doesn't love us because we're good. We're special. He doesn't love us for that reason. He loves us just for the fact that He loves us. He loves you for who you are. He loves you. He chose. Love is, a, love is not an emotion. Love is a choice. Love is a choice. To love someone means you choose to love them. All their good, bad, different doesn't make a difference, right? Lisa, you still love me even though I'm bad sometimes. I don't say the right thing. I don't do the right thing. You see, my wife still loves me. She doesn't take offense, I don't think, sometimes. But 
She still loves me. I might anger her or make her upset, but she still loves me. She didn't walk out the door and said, I'm not going to have anything more to do with you. I'm done. She loves me. You see, it's a choice. The same thing that God loves us. He doesn't, if we mess up, we screw up, He doesn't walk out the door and say, I'm done with you. It's over. That's it. You went too far. You see, sometimes we have a conception of God, or we can think God is like our earthly parents. And parents, are they love us as much as they can love us, and they... Nobody's a perfect parent except for God the Father. <laughs> all parents do things wrong. All parents say the wrong things to their kid. All parents react sometimes to the kids, what they do or what they don't do. But God is not like that. He's the perfect parent. He loves us despite what we do. It says, God so loved the world. God so loved you that He gave His Son. It wasn't because you were good. You were special. You were... The creme de la creme, that oh, that you know, he you stood out above the crowd. No, it says God loved us all, all humanity. He loved with regard, without regards to. It says God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't respect anyone individually. He'll put this individual above that individual, or them above them, or preachers above the no, the normal churchgoers. He does not do that. The, they say the the. The field is level at the foot of the cross. Everybody's on the same level at the foot of the cross with respect to God's love. We have different callings, we have different purposes God has for us in this life, but that doesn't make any, any one of us more special to God than any of the others. God loves us all the same. He's without respect of persons. He doesn't play favorites. He loves us all. Why? Because it's not based on what you do. Did God love and send His Son, love you and send His Son for you because you were some great thing or you were doing some great thing? Or you were just so special? No, it says God loved you when you couldn't love Him, when you were unlovable. And why in the world do we think that after we get saved that we're now, that we're going to do something to make God love us? Now don't tell me that ain't true, because that's true in most churches today. Well, you got to do this. you got to say this. You don't say that. Say this. Do this. Don't do that. Come to our church or God doesn't love you. Or if you're not a Baptist, or if you're not a Charismatic, or if you're not a Pentecostal, or if you're not a uh, Lutheran, or whatever, God, then God doesn't love you. Well, that's your opinion. It's not God's opinion. You see, God doesn't, it's not that. It's... It's all about God and loving you and wanting to have a relationship with you. He had to send His Son because there was not a single one of us that were worthy of salvation. And even after being born again and saved, and even after living a Christian for a good number of years, I'm still not worthy of salvation. It doesn't make any difference how much I read my Bible, how much I study and pray, how much I pray for people, how much I preach. All that, God's love is not based on that. God's love is based on one thing. That is that He chose to love you. He chose to send His Son to bring you back into fellowship with Him. Amen? God loves you. God loves you. He made a choice. Send His Son, and then all you have to do, your response, what is your part of that? Is That is to believe in Jesus. The atoning work of, of Jesus. The great the grace provided. You see, God has provided. We've been over that several weeks now, months. That God has already provided. Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. By grace you are saved. Grace provided it. What's grace? Grace is the unmerited, unearned favor of God. God's love didn't, God didn't bestow his love upon you doesn't love you because you do something or you don't do something. His love does not change for you. Something pops up or circumstance in life pops up and, and you know it's quite overwhelming. It's maybe a negative circumstance, a negative situation. And what does your thoughts go? Did your first thought is, well God, don't you love me? <laughs> 
He never stopped loving you. You see, we are placed in an environment, in a world that is not yet heaven. This world isn't heaven. While we manifest and bring into light the love of God into this world, God shed His love into this world, brought His love into this world through His Son Jesus, this is still not the kingdom of God. I challenge anybody that says this is the kingdom of God. No way. Read your Bible. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're in a world here who Satan is in small g, God of this world. In other words, he has free reign, except for when it comes to the right of a believer. We have authority over the devil. He does not have authority over us. If you want to give him the inroad and give him the authority, I guess, well, go ahead. If you want to submit to him, that's like... But we're in a world, not all things, all circumstances of this life are God-initiated or God approved. <laughs> Can I say it that way? God doesn't send sickness and disease, circumstances, trials and tests. No, it says when you're tested, tempted, don't say when you're tempted or tested or tried that you're tempted of God. God can tempt no man with evil. Not a single one. I don't know how I got there. Okay, it says grace provided. 2.8 says that God provided. What did He provide? Jesus. He provided everything that you ever, ever need in this life. Grace provided. So what's your part in it? For by grace you have been saved. But your part is to believe. Find out what He provided. Find out what He did. And then uh, receive it by faith. It's quite simple. First of all, you've got to know what he, did, what he did for you. What He provided. What did He provide? He provided Jesus Christ. He provided His Son to bring, redeem us back to Himself. Amen? To bring us back into fellowship with God. You see, our righteous, what we do is based on God's love. God, when He looks at us, He sees His love. He loves us. Secondly, He sees His Son. He doesn't see you per se. He doesn't see your righteousness. He doesn't see your goodness. He sees the righteousness of His Son. It says in Romans that Jesus Christ, His righteousness has been imputed unto us. That means it's been put into our account. His righteousness has been put into our account. Unless you want to try to live by your own righteousness, and it says our righteousness is filthy rags. What did you say? Wait a minute, that's before salvation. No, that's after salvation. <laughs> Paul said that God forbid. He said, oh, you stupid idiot Galatians. That's what foolishness means. <laughs> Paul is quite frank with the... <laughs> with the with the Galatians. That's Galatians 3 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, deceived you, in other words, that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among us, among you as crucified. Verse 2 says, This only I want you I want to learn of you, I want to know of you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the flesh or by the hearing of faith? Did you get saved by the works of the flesh? Are you still trying to be saved by the works of the flesh? Why is it then, we, we, when we, before we're saved, we said, you know, we don't, they don't worry about what you do, did or done or what you're doing. Just come and receive the Lord. doesn't make any difference, the sin that you have. Just come and receive Him. Confess to Him. Believe and receive Him. And yet after salvation, then we want to start basing it back on works. And it's not, salvation is not based on works. It's not based on what you do and you don't do. It's based on the love of God and what grace His love provided through Jesus Christ. His righteousness is now imputed to us. His righteousness is now in my account. The Scriptures exhort us, the Word of God does exhort us to walk in His 